So from here, we move on to step five, which is importing the exported data into Caseware Working Papers. Now to do this, I'm just going to minimize the online data folder here and open up Caseware Working Papers. Now I'm not in a file at this time. I'm actually going to create a brand new file. And the new file name is going to be Pro Hockey School. And I believe it's a 2018 year end that we're going to be dealing with today. So I'm going to go 12, uh, 31, 2018. I like to include the fiscal year in my case where file names. And we can use any of the templates. Today I'm going to use the Canadian Financials template and create a new file from that. Now this is going to take a moment as it copies over the components of the Canadian Financials template, but it's nice to have a starting point. And many of your accountants and the accountants that are joined us today already have templates. So whatever templates that you're currently using, of course, you can import into a new file created from that template. Or perhaps you've rolled the file forward from last year and you're going to use the roll forward file to import the data. So in a moment, it's going to put me into the engagement properties. And at the moment, it says year-end date 2013. I happen to know it's 2018, so I can change this. Or I could have ignored it and just accepted the properties coming in from QuickBooks. In the name and address field, I'm not putting anything in here at the moment. And the reason for that is because on the import from the QuickBooks data, I'm going to take as much information from QuickBooks as I can. So I'm just going to go ahead and click OK my engagement properties. In the trial balance, we currently have no data. That's very important for me to show you. So what I'd like to do is import that data that I just exported. So under the engagement tab, and for some of you, uh, this is uh, working papers. This might be a new interface for you. We did move the 2015 interface away from menus and into the ribbons interface. So under engagement, we have import and I want to go with accounting software. So we've got QuickBooks here, and that's where we're going to be importing from. And I'm going to be choosing the 2015 version, or I can go all the way up to QuickBooks Online, which is probably even better for me. So the import path, we would browse for that. And as you can see, I've already browsed to the QB Online data folder, so I've selected that folder, and I'll leave it there. In that folder, if I've downloaded trial balance information for more than one QuickBooks Online file, we have a drop-down that allows us to choose which one we would like to bring down. I'm going to import the client information, and for this one, I'm just going with the trial balance. However, general ledger detail is an option if it's available to you. For the accounting year, I'm going to stick with the 2018 year in this file. However, you can see that there's other years. Quite often, the file will be rolled forward into the subsequent year when the data is delivered to the account. So you want to make sure that you're bringing in the data reflective of the year that you're going to be working on and not accidentally the first one or two months of the subsequent year. The period date sequence can be selected. I'm going to use yearly in my file here. I'm going to bring in prior year data if it's available, budget data as well. And I'll also import inactive accounts, but I don't have to. Now, the only reason I'm bringing in prior year data is because I don't have comparatives in this file. If it turns out that I don't have comparative in the QuickBooks Online file, it will bring in zeros for the prior year. I'm showing all sub-accounts in the account number field, and if I had multiple classes, I could use the class to build the entity structure in a consolidated file in case we're working papers. If tax codes are set up within the QuickBooks Online file, we can bring those across as well. And we can also import the name of the account into the extended description field. So we'll see a three-dotted button at the end of the name field, and that can be populated with the account name. I'm not going to do that. I just need the account name, and we're all set. If there's Giphy set up, we can also extract that information as well. With this all set, all I have to do now is click the OK button. But if you're not sure, there's always help. If you click on Help, it will take you straight into the Importing from QuickBooks Help, and it talks to you about the different versions and how to deal with it. Importing using QuickBooks Online is one of our options that are available there, and it shows us the procedures step by step, and there's also more instructions available to us. Now, the instructions here give us a quick reference guide, 
and all kinds of other information. You will note once again that there is a handout in the GoToWebinar panel that downloads the instructions on how to export from QuickBooks Online so that you can import into Caseware Working Papers. Let me just close this, go back to Working Papers, and click OK. So it's reaching out to those data files that we just exported, and that quickly it's brought them in. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK, and we can see the accounts. Now at first glance, this can be somewhat scary. Uh, right now, I'm sorting by type, but typically it comes in and it sorts by account number. Now as many of you know, QuickBooks does not require an account number to be assigned to an account. So if the setup includes accounts that do not have account numbers assigned, what Caseware will do is look at the record number of that account in the QuickBooks database and assign the record number to that item. Many junior accountants have fallen trapped to this, whereby they look at those numbers and say, well, that doesn't fit my scheme, so I'm going to renumber these so that they fit into how we number trial balance accounts. I strongly caution you not to do that, because next year when you do the import, you're going to get these numbers again, unless your client has updated their account numbers. So please be aware you don't want to duplicate it. But then you say, but Todd, everything's out of order. I've got income statement and balance sheet items under types, and, and if I do a trial balance, it's going to show up the way I want it to show up, and that's not a problem because at the moment, we haven't mapped the chart of accounts. So if I go to my document manager, and I open up my trial balance report, this is what we would currently see, and of course, it's numerically listed, and all the sub-accounts end up down at the bottom because those account numbers are much bigger than the ones above it. We're going to fix that, and you know what? I probably should have brought in the 2022 data. There's a lot of zero balance data here. That's okay. 